Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the U.S. Air Force Weapons School, we welcome you and our distinguished capstone visitors to Aerospace Power 2000. Watch the F-15 on the right as he launches an AIM-9 Sidewinder missile at the flare in front of the stands. Tactical surprise is easily achievable by modern air power. The explosion simulated the impact of conventional air-launched cruise missiles launched from a B-52 hundreds of miles away. The explosions were equivalent to the blast from a 500-pound bomb. Keep in mind that these did not have the fragmentation associated with actual bombs, which would have traveled over half of a mile and destroyed these stands. The F-15C Eagles, America's premier air superiority fighters, flew by at just under the speed of sound. Today, you will witness an exciting demonstration of global engagement and aerospace power implemented by a United States Air Expeditionary Force comprised of active duty, guard, and reserve forces. When you leave, you will understand how integrated air and space power will cripple an adversary's strategic centers of gravity and win the decisive halt phase of a campaign. You will see the Air Force's unique core competencies demonstrated, such as air and space superiority, global attack, precision engagement, and information superiority, as well as elements of rapid global mobility and agile combat support. These competencies are critical to ensuring that personnel, weapons, and aircraft are available for today's attack. The unique and inherent strengths of modern air and space power are speed, global range, flexibility, lethality, and global perspective. And that's just what we're here to show you today. The first quarter of the 21st century will demand that the Joint Force Commander field robust, flexible capabilities to cope with a wide range of contingencies. The Air Force has developed and demonstrated the concept of an air expeditionary force which is rapidly deployable from the United States to any point on the globe. Our demonstration today follows an air expeditionary force into combat as they demonstrate core competencies. The Air Force's ability to attack rapidly anywhere on the globe at any time is unique. We provide global power projection and presence with a mix of long-range and theater aircraft based in the United States and at forward locations. Rapid global mobility provides the nation its global reach and underpins its role as a global power. The ability to move rapidly to any spot on the globe ensures that the nations can respond decisively to unexpected challenges, protect its interests, and to meet aggression head on. Precision engagement enables us to apply selective force against specific targets. Although many Air Force aircraft are capable of precision engagement, including the F-16C Fighting Falcon and the F-15E Strike Eagle, the most ethereal remains the stealthy F-117 Nighthawk. The F-117 can be employed to disrupt the enemy's command and control net, taking out his eyes and ears, just as they did in the early days of the Gulf War. Ladies and gentlemen, the F-117 pilots will be using lasers to guide their munitions. Please do not use any binoculars or cameras to view the target during this portion of the demonstration. Now, coming from your right, the first of two F-117s, each delivering a single 2,000-pound laser-guided bomb against two command and control targets slightly to your right. Please direct your attention to the big screen for a replay of the 2,000-pound laser-guided bomb.
The F-117 has just disrupted the enemy's command and control net, taking out his eyes and ears. It will now be much more difficult for the enemy to direct his forces in response to our attack. America's newest bomber, the B-2 Spirit, provides the penetrating flexibility and effectiveness only a manned bomber can provide. It has true multi-target precision killing capability, carrying as many as 16 2,000-pound Joint Direct Attack Munitions, or JDAMs. An actual JDAM release and impact is now being displayed on the big screen. The B-2 can release a salvo of stores, and each weapon is precision guided to a predetermined target, engaging the enemy at his centers of gravity and minimizing collateral damage. An actual JDAM delivery would be conducted under the cover of darkness, well above the target area, above the threat's reach. The B-2 Spirit will approach from your right, carrying 40 Mark 82 500-pound bombs. Now, from your right, the B-2 Spirit Bomber. Please direct your attention to the big screen for a replay of the B-2 Mark 82 drop. Air and space superiority delivers a fundamental benefit to the joint force. It prevents enemies from interfering with the operations of air, space or surface forces and assures freedom of action and movement. It allows the joint force to dominate enemy operations in all dimensions, land, sea, air, and space. Now that a hole has been created in the enemy's radar detection capability, two F-15Cs working in concert with the Airborne Warning and Control System, or AWACS, will sweep through the area. AWACS, with call sign Dark Star, is orbiting high above and can detect any violators and vector the F-15s for the kill. The F-15 has destroyed over 95 enemy aircraft in aerial combat without suffering a single loss. Unchallenged for almost 25 years, the Eagle has served America well. The smoke trails you see to your right simulate launches of enemy surface-to-air missiles or SAMs. The flares dispensed by the F-15s are countermeasures to decoy heat-seeking missiles launched by enemy forces. As the futuristic F-22 takes its place as the premier air dominance fighter, the imperative for air and space supremacy is assured. Satellites orbiting above our exercise can detect the active transmissions from the surface-to-air missile site. In a matter of moments, the location is pinpointed and the data passed electronically to our F-16s. We are nearing the ability to find fix, track, and target from space anything of consequence on the face of the Earth. Using state-of-the-art technology, the F-16 Fighting Falcon can detect enemy missile and anti-aircraft artillery sites and launch high-speed anti-radiation missiles against them. If the missile operator is clever enough to turn his radar off, a trick many Iraqis soon learned, our fighting falcons will resort to more traditional and permanent means of suppression. Let's watch as this daring game of cat and mouse unfolds. To your left, the F-16s begin their attack. Each aircraft will be dropping a total of 404 combined effects bomblets, covering an area roughly the size of two football fields. Please watch the big screen for a replay of the CBU drop.
Close air support by joint air assets remain an important air power mission. By providing local supremacy, air power allows ground commanders the freedom to maneuver. Selectively applied, close air support can provide the joint force commander with highly effective fire support for offensive or defensive operations. In today's exercise, you will see two distinctly different types of aircraft. The A-10 Thunderbolt II in both its ground attack and forward air controller roles and the F-16C Fighting Falcon also capable of both missions. These two aircraft combine to fly over half the total tactical sorties flown during Desert Storm. The A-10 was specifically designed for close air support. The ability to kill targets at long range before the aircraft can be heard prompted the Iraqis to nickname the A-10 the Silent Gun. The Warthog is a tough, maneuverable, survivable aircraft. The A-10 carries a flexible and impressive payload ranging from CBU-87 and laser-guided bombs to as many as six AGM-65 Maverick missiles in addition to 1150 armor-piercing incendiary 30mm rounds. The first aircraft you will see will be the OA-10 forward air controller. His call sign today is Rifle. He circles over the battlefield, spots enemy positions, talks to his ground counterparts, deconflicts artillery and friendly positions, and directs the airstrike. The FAC will either mark the targets with white phosphorus rockets or pass map and topographical references to the fighters. The first fighter's call sign is Hog, a flight of four A-10s. In an attempt to mass firepower, the FAC A will call in a flight of two F-16Cs. Their call sign today is Snake, and their ordnance is two 2,000-pound bombs. Now it's time to go airborne with our FAC as he finds and marks his target and then controls the airstrike. Hog rifle, uh, FAC's in to mark, elevation 30-30. I got three tanks in the open. I need 30 millimeter on that. Got two marks away, call the marks in sight. FAC's off to the southeast. Hog's got the marks. The marks bracket your east and center target. Three vehicles oriented east-west, you're cleared in. Hog one's in from the east. One, you're in sight. One, you're cleared hot. Cleared hot. Two, you're cleared hot. Three's in. Three, you're in sight, cleared hot. Okay, I've got an SA-9 to the north, and uh, rifle's picking up eight rod this time. Uh, eight large to the north, I need everybody off south. Rifle's in on the nine. Cover egress and south. I'm keep it south, take it down low.
I got uh, nine vehicles destroyed, three tanks, unknown KBA. Hog, I got uh, multiple vehicles north of your last target. About a click and a half. Back is in the mark. Two more marks away. Hog call those in sight. Hog's got the marks. Okay, guys, you got sub. Hog, those smokes are just east of your targets. I need you on those tanks now. Snake, and, uh, four tanks, one Zeus. Unknown KBA. Yeah, Hog, I need you multiple passes on, the, on those tanks. We've got uh, additional ones moving into that area. I got a possible Zeus moving back in there. Using the suppression capabilities of the A-10 and the rest of the strike package to sanitize the area, two HH-60G Pavehawk helicopters ingress at low altitude. Their mission is to recover an Allied pilot down behind enemy lines. U.S. Air Force HH-60s modified for combat rescue have an unrefueled combat radius of 250 miles, which can be extended by air refueling from C-130 tanker aircraft. The lead aircraft uses the fast rope to insert two pararescue specialists to secure and treat the survivor. After ensuring the area is clear to land, the Paypox will set down to recover the team. Jolly, Sandy 1. Sandy, Jolly, go. That's your loud and clear. That's your 5-2, pop smoke. Sandy, rifling at two columns of vehicles about four clicks north of your survivor. We're looking for the uh, smoke. Sandy 2, come uh, back around. Pick the uh, targets to the east. Pick is in on the targets in the east. Sandy Rifle, I see uh, 12 vehicles, 12 vehicles moving south. Hey, copy that. Sandy, uh, Dark Star's looking for an uh, update on the survival. Copy, PJ's on the ground. Dark Star Rifle, uh, Sandy passes at uh, PJ's are on the ground. Condition is good. I'll be picking up in approximately uh, one minute. Copy, uh, one minute. Target's north. All in southeast, I got theirs in sight. Copy, let's lay down some uh, covering fire. Sandy Rifle, I can request, I got uh, two F-16s and four hogs uh, if you need them. I mean, Jolly's on the deck. And Snake Rifle, I need uh, diversionary attack on that uh, first target as brief. You're cleared in. Keep all fires east of the lake bed. How copy? Jolly, 30 seconds. Taking fire from the north. Rifle, I got uh, all the smokes left, Sandy. I'll put what I got down. Sandy, come to the 30 seconds. Sandy, two, get those dismounts to the uh, north of the survivor. Sandy, two, Sally, dismounts to the front. Dark Star's one of their status survivor. About 10 seconds. Copy. Dark Star, you copy. Sandy, survivor. Rifle, you copy. We are successful. We aggressive. Sandy, let's go. We're daisy chain. The PAVOC is capable of day or night operations at very low altitude. It is outfitted with a forward-looking infrared system, highly accurate navigation systems, and night vision equipment. By exploiting these night capabilities, the HH-60 can avoid a significant portion of the threat and capitalize on surprise and confusion of the enemy forces. The Allied aviator is safely aboard and will be returned to his unit to fight another day. The ability of the future joint team to achieve dominant battlefield awareness depends heavily on the ability of the Air Force's air and space-based assets to provide global awareness, intelligence, communications, weather, and navigation support. While information superiority is not the Air Force's sole domain, it remains an Air Force core competency. 
Providing full spectrum dominance requires a truly interactive common battle space picture. The Air Force delivers this with a variety of systems, including the Predator unmanned aerial vehicle. Able to loiter for over 24 hours, 500 miles from its base, the Predator provides a responsive capability to conduct wide area, near real-time reconnaissance, surveillance, and target acquisition for the Joint Forces. Using electro-optical infrared sophisticated radar sensors, the Predator improves the commander's situational awareness while minimizing risk to human life. The Joint Surveillance Target Attack Radar System, or J-STARS, proved its utility in the Gulf War, detecting the movement of Iraqi formations. For today's scenario, the J-STARS has used its moving target indicator and synthetic aperture radar to detect a column of armored vehicles moving to engage Joint Forces. The Joint Force Commander orders the column stopped. J-STARS relays targeting information, including near real-time imagery, to a flight of F-15E Strike Eagles on airborne alert. The capability to provide real-time information in the cockpit from airborne or spaceborne sensors to the air crews dramatically shortens the targeting cycle. Time-critical attacks can be meted against such fleeting targets as Scud missiles and is one of the most dramatic applications of Air Force information superiority. With sophisticated avionics and a two-man crew, the F-15E Strike Eagle is well suited to airborne tasking. Although normally armed with precision weapons, today the F-15E Strike Eagles will each be carrying four 2,000-pound bombs. For heavily defended targets, the F-15E can employ weapons from outside the range of many ground-to-air threats. Using remote data link, the Strike Eagle crew can guide penetrating warheads to within feet of the target. Now, from your right, the F-15Es, with a handoff from J-STARS, will stop the movers. The ability of the Air Force to rapidly attack anywhere on the globe at any time is unique. The military utility of air power, in particular its speed, range and flexibility, prompted the creation of the Air Force as a separate service 50 years ago. Air Force bombers provide versatile, responsive combat power, able to intervene decisively when necessary. Demonstrating precision and power, two B-1B Lancers, each carrying 48 500-pound general-purpose bombs, have flown non-stop from Ellsworth Air Force Base, South Dakota. The B-1B Lancer is as fast as many fighters. It has 10 times the range and 5 times the payload. Now, from your right, the B-1B Bomber. Please direct your attention to the big screen for a replay.
The B-52 Buff has served America for over 43 years. It has participated in more conflicts than any other aircraft in history. During Desert Storm, the Buff dropped over 40% of the coalition's total bombs. With the addition of precision munitions, like the Joint Direct Attack Munition, or JDAM, and the Joint Standoff Weapon, JSAW, Air Force bombers will be even more effective in global attack. The aircraft to your right, two B-52s from Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, continue the attack on the enemy with 51 750-pound bombs each. Please watch the big screen for a replay of the action. Air Force Global Attack is the ability to find and attack targets anywhere on the globe using synergy generated by air and space assets to destroy strategic centers. What we have shown you today is but a glimpse of this awesome capability. And now, setting up for their final pass before returning to Idaho, the B-1B Lancer, escorted by two Strike Eagles. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished visitors, global engagement is based on a firm understanding of what aerospace power means to the nation. The ability to hit an adversary's strategic center of gravity directly as well as prevail at the operational and tactical levels of warfare. The ability to orchestrate military operations throughout the world and bring intense firepower to bear over global distances in rapid response to aggression gives national leaders unprecedented leverage. The United States Air Force prides itself on the war fighting capabilities we bring to any joint battle. We understand the aerospace advantages of speed, range, maneuverability and perspective and because of this we do three things better than any other Air Force in the world. Fly, fight, and win. <laughs>